when I grew up, I didn't come from a very religious background. Uh, where I grew up was kind of rougher. It wasn't as bad as some places out here in the Bay, but, you know, it wasn't the best. Um, I grew up with a mom who was um, an addict, and she also suffered from... Um, just some kind of uh, like abusive tendencies to her children. Um, so I, I, I grew up a little bit rough with my mom. And when I was eight years old, my father unfortunately passed away. So I um, was raised by my grandma and my grandma, uh, alhamdulillah, was there for me and she took care of me and she raised me to the best that she could. My parents weren't around and my grandma was uh, working two jobs. I unfortunately ended up doing what some kids do and turn to the streets and kind of turn to some bad group of people. Well, they weren't bad groups of people. They just weren't doing the best of things, you know. So I went through that little adventure of my life, kind of growing up in gangs and, you know, violence, um, the same way I grew up when I was a kid. And then I started losing a lot of my friends to gun violence and um, different kind of violences of that way. So, so then I ended up kind of venturing off into that world where I unfortunately developed my own addictions. Um, with alcohol and drugs and uh, ended up losing a lot of friends in that lifestyle as well, whether it was from overdoses or unfortunately a lot of suicides in um, my life. And yeah, and so all of that brought me to a person who I dated for a very long time. I actually met them in the party scene and they were already a professional fighter and that is how I found fighting. And when I found fighting, I um, started to clean up my act and I became an athlete and I started to, um, yeah, just clean up my act and, and do some better things, make some changes. I got clean, I got off of drugs, I got off of alcohol and I had some really good runs and I eventually ended up going pro. At the time I still, wasn't really having a lot of faith. I was still very rocky in my faith. Some days I felt close to God. Some days I didn't know what that meant. Some days I felt like, you know, how could there be anything else but just us? And like, I was just constantly like going back and forth with myself. Um, and then I had my second fight with PFL against a girl named Larissa Pacheco. And she finished me in 45 seconds. And she... She, uh, the people on YouTube were like, man, she hit her so hard. She knocked her right into God. And it's kind of true. She did, you know, she, uh, she, she punched me right into Islam. But, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, it, it, after that fight, even though I was in the middle of this amazing opportunity, I went back to having like these, these bad thoughts and just like these, like not wanting to be here thoughts and just like these dark thoughts that I've spent my whole life feeling like I was getting away from. And, um, one thing about fighting, fighting will expose you. It will expose your, your goods, your bads and all that stuff. So I remember just laying in bed after that fight and not praying like we pray. I pray now, but just like begging God, like, please, I don't know if you're listening. I don't know what, like, just help me. Like, I can't do this anymore. I'm so tired. And, um, that's when MJ just kept being like, please, like, please listen to me. You know, I would never do anything wrong. I would never steal you wrong. Like learn a little bit about Islam. Like, let me take you to the mosque, just please. And then he started telling me about what I know now as Tajud. He's like, just wake up. It's the most special prayer. Wake up in the middle of the night and pray. Just ask God for anything. He'll give it to you. I promise you. And I didn't really know what that meant. And I didn't know how to pray. Like I said, I, I did not grow up religious at all. So we didn't pray at night. We didn't pray over food. We didn't pray at all. Um, so I didn't know what that meant. But for a whole week, I was waking up 3.30, 3.45, 4 o'clock every day for a whole week, every day, every day, every day. 
And then finally I was just like, man, like that's, it's gotta be something like, this isn't just me, no alarm clock, no nothing. I'm just popped up right wide awake at the time that MJ had just told me that like is the most special time to pray. Um, I didn't pray, but I, but I was very like, it, like just aware. And then I would feel so like, God, this just feels so right. Like I feels like such a good time of night, but it's four o'clock in the morning. Like, why do I feel like this? And then that's when I let MJ take me to MCC and then we took my shot. And that was eight months ago. Now, everybody told me they were like, Hey, don't overwhelm yourself. And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm on myself. I'm just going to learn about th this amazing religion that I'm a part of now, yeah. you know, like I'm gonna get closer to God. But I was like trying to use Islam to get me closer to God. And I was just like cramming knowledge in my head. And then I, I just was so overwhelmed. And then I ended up feeling like, oh, I'm not doing anything right. I'm not being a good Muslim. Like, I'm, you know, still like have like these little Westerner ways about me, like habits. Like I need to break them. Need to, and then I was like beating myself because I couldn't break them right away. And then finally I just had to take a breath. And I was like, you know what, Amber, just go back to what everybody said, literally everybody said the same thing when I reverted. And I was like, and just focus on your prayers, just learn your prayers by heart, focus on your prayers, get close to God and let God do the rest. They'll bring you Islam, he'll bring you Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Like he'll bring you all those things that you need, but all you need to focus on is getting close to God and trusting. And that's been my biggest thing. Um, for the last eight months is alhamdulillah through everything. Cause even though I'm a Muslim now, like I still go through family stuff, you know, I still go through issues and still, you know, I didn't win a million dollars. So we're still going through financial stuff and to just trust and just alhamdulillah through everything, just believe and trust in God. And like, he's got me no matter what he's got me. And so, yeah, the last month, eight months have been a lot and, uh, or not a lot, but like great, you know, like it, I feel I feel so much more like relieved and just peaceful. And now like, I don't feel so alone anymore. And I feel like oh, that I have a purpose now. Like before I used to be terrified to die, terrified. Like it would haunt me at night. Like I would never, you know, and now that I know so much and I know that why this life is hard. And now I know why, um, you know, things are rough and I know like what this beautiful place is just waiting for us on the other side. It's just made everything just so much more relaxed and just, I feel so peaceful inside my, myself now. So. Because I have always been on my own that sometimes my first thought isn't Alhamdulillah. Or my first thought isn't like, well, this is God's plan. My first part thought is like, how am I going to fix this? Like, what did I do? Like, what, what do I do? How do I make it better? You know? So, um, as much as I am learning all these things, there are times where just by habit, um, my first thought isn't initially alhamdulillah. And, and it's almost kind of beautiful though, because then it does remind me alhamdulillah. Cause at, at first I'm like, no, 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 wait, you're supposed to just trust. Like it's okay. Like, you know, like having financial problems, like money is nothing, you know, in this life money's not, I'm not taking money with me. And like what Jenna has for me when I get there is more than anything this life could ever have.